Hi, this is Kim and I'm in East Africa. I'm in the nation of Ta Tanzania in the city of Kayanga. And uh, today we've already had the glorious privilege of preaching the gospel this day in a nearby city called Omura Shaka. And I get excited, I get passionate about preaching the gospel because what we, what we don't realize is how God uses it. The Bible says God has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save the lost. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But Jesus said it best. Jesus said in Mark chapter 4, verse 26, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. And night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. And as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. You know, the Bible says that farmer, puts, he scatters that seed, but he goes to bed. And Jesus said, the seed grows, though the farmer doesn't know how. When we preach the word of God, we never know how God can use it. Even if we feel foolish, the Bible says God uses the foolishness of preaching. And so that's why I love preaching the gospel, open air or anywhere else, because it's so powerful, the message of the gospel, the word of God. And Jesus, when he said this, this seed grows, though he does not know how. Oh, I have so many examples of that. You know, just a, a less than a year ago, nine months ago, I was in this same area, Caragüe of Tanzania, and we were going through the banana groves and into the little into the little houses and stuff and sharing the gospel with families. And we entered a home, and there was a lot of people in there and a lot of children, and we began to talk to people, and there was a sweet. Uh, uh, an aged woman who came out and we met her and uh, African tradition we called her mother and so we met mother and we we greeted her and, and uh, with respect and but then we begin to share the gospel with the family and we wound up really zeroing in on the dad of the family he was the key he had many questions and he said I don't know if I I, I, I hear what you're saying but I don't know if I want to change my religion and so he understood that it was a big decision. And so uh, we were able to share with this man for a lengthy time, uh, probably 40 minutes or so. And I didn't see the mother anymore. And uh, I assumed that she drifted into another room or, or was tired, but she left. And so, um, you know, I didn't really know where she was. I didn't think she was in the room, but we shared the gospel with the other family members and shared the gospel with the man. And there came a point the interpreter turned to me and said, Brother Ken, he wants to pray. He wants to receive Jesus Christ. And so I prayed with this man. And we prayed for him and we asked others if they wanted to come to Jesus Christ. And this man uh, and other people in the room said, yes, we want to come to Jesus. And we prayed a prayer for all of those that they would come to faith and they professed Christ right then and there. And we were saying goodbye and it was great joy. And we were leaving and... Uh, we, we thought it was over and we were trying to encourage them and there was a, some people from the church there with us to, to take them along and teach them about the faith and disciple them. But we were trying to encourage them. And right at this moment, I, I heard a small voice and I, I didn't know who it was. And then the interpreter said to me, Ken, this lady, she wants to, she wants to know if she can be saved. And what I didn't know was I was sitting like on a sofa there was a man here and sitting on the floor behind him down where I couldn't see her was the mother the aged mother and she'd been there the whole time and I didn't know it and she heard all the words of the gospel and she asked me if she too could receive Jesus Christ and you know what's amazing is uh, she received Christ and prayed that day as her to take Jesus as her Savior put her faith in him have her sins forgiven and you know what's amazing is, um, I was just at that same church yesterday, and I asked the people, what about those people who got saved that day? Are they here, are they in the church? And they said, yes, except for the, the older lady, the mother. And I said, oh really, she's not here? And he said, no, she died. So that means that that lady,
I planted seeds in her life. I didn't even know she was in the room. But she gave her heart to Jesus less than nine months before she died. And so we have to always trust God. One time I was in a laundromat in a place called Arlington, Texas. And I was sharing the gospel with an Asian man. And I was telling him about Jesus. I was so zealous that I was just telling him about Jesus and how he could be saved. And I was telling him, I was telling him how he could be saved. And I talked to him maybe 30 minutes. And when the moment came, I asked him if he wanted to accept Jesus Christ and by faith receive forgiveness of his sins. And he said, no. And I thought, wow, I've shared the gospel with him, but he's not interested. And so, you know, the amazing thing was I kind of said goodbye to him. Another young man walked up to me and that young man came and said, I was listening to your conversation. He was like five feet away. And he said, I was listening to your conversation. And he said, you know what? I would like to receive Jesus Christ. And you know, I had the privilege. I had the privilege. Mzungu uh, Kicha. And I had the privilege of leading that young man. I had the privilege of leading that young man to faith in Jesus Christ, even though I wasn't talking to him initially. He was just listening in and he gave his heart and his life to Jesus Christ. So we have to have such excitement and, and diligence to plant the seeds of the Word of God. Make it your lifestyle to plant the seeds of God's Word everywhere you go because God's, Jesus said that they'll grow though you do not know how. Bless you. Share the gospel today with someone.